everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be featuring some new Newton's Nook stamps and dies, and I wanted to create a really fun watercolor card using the Fabulous Frenchie stamp set. Now in the card I did end up using this Newton's Nook stencil, and I was planning on using these dies that are also a Newton's Nook release, but I decided in the end not to. I'm going to start by stamping my dogs onto my Strathmore watercolor paper using Barely Beige Simon Says Stamp ink, and I'll use my Misty tool so that I can stamp this a couple times to get a slightly darker version of the stamping. The stamping is pretty light, so I'll tip it in the light here so you can see it a little bit better, and I'll zoom in so you can see the detail as I start to color. Now because this video is focused on how to create the detailed watercolor effect and how to make realistic looking fur, I'm going to not show you how I created the entire card, but rather how I created the puppies themselves. So these fabulous Frenchies set reminds me so much of my friend Stephanie Lakoff's dog, Lucas. Stephanie works with me at Simon Says Stamp and I love her dog Lucas, he's so so cute. And I want to create this card for her because she loves Frenchie so much. So I'm starting off by putting down a base color of watercolor onto my puppies just to give them something to work with. I like putting down a base coat of color before I start watercoloring any details or second layers or more layers on top of that because this gives me a base to have underneath of everything which gives the image a lot more depth. So I'm going to color through all of the images here just putting down a very simple base coat of color. This is really simple water coloring. There's nothing really fancy about what I'm doing. I'm just putting down color and blending it out to create as flat of a wash as possible. Now once you've gotten your wash of color down, then you'll be able to start working on adding the detail. And that's what's gonna bring these puppies to life. When you work with these detailed techniques, you're gonna to wanna to use a very small brush. I used both a mix of a one and a zero brush. By adding these additional layers of flicks of color coming off of the shape of the dog itself, that's giving the dog the appearance of a furry look. I'm also blending out color in spots once I've let it sit on the paper for a minute or two. That's giving the paper a chance to soak up the color and by fading out the edges that creates a softer appearance, but the area where we did not fade out the color is still dark and vibrant. And you'll notice as I go around certain areas of the puppy, I'm making sure to add flicks of color off of those edges, and that gives him even more furry look. By having some harder lines of color, adding in those details with the really small brushes, that's giving the puppy again that furry texture. And by not blending it out, we're still maintaining that hard line in spots, and we're also still maintaining that vibrancy. So it's going to give our puppy a lot of depth because we're not adding lots of layers on top of here other than the flicks of color. If you haven't done detailed watercolor before, this is a really simple process. It's basically a combination of a little patience and some practice with a brush. If you haven't done this before, I would encourage you to try practicing with your brush before bringing it onto your project so that way you have a chance to get a feel for how your brush works. As I work over this image, I will let certain areas dry before I go in and add additional layers. Now I'm going to slow this down a little bit so you can get an even more closer look and also a bit more of a in real time effect. As you can see, this is not sped up. This is how I color right off. So. You can see I go pretty slow. I'm very careful with how I put color down because it's always easier to add more than to take away. So by using a slow pace and also by just being very patient with how you put the color down and just use sparing strokes, you can always come back in and add more. So like on the hind leg of the puppy in the far back, I felt like that needed to be darker. So later I'll bring in some even more darker gray and add that in. Now this puppy I want to have a brown and white appearance, so I used gray to add in that shading to the white. Once we have most of the coloring finished, I'll start adding in the more finer details. And I'm being very careful with how I do this because this is very precise now. Because we're adding in those final details, we don't want to rush this because these are going to be extremely detailed areas and we don't want them to be muddy or messy. Now if you do have an area where you mess up, I will show you how to fix that. So on this puppy's ear, I colored him his entire ear brown, and that's not what I wanted to do. 
So I'm going to use a scrubbing motion, which is basically taking a clean brush and just picking up color. I'm wiping it off onto a baby wipe so I can wipe off the paint that I'm picking up. And I will re-wet my brush to clean it off completely to help make sure I get a really nice clean look. Then I can go back in and fix that ear and put it back to the way it was. Now using acrylic paint is a great way to add highlights because acrylic paint of course is opaque. So by taking your brush and a little bit of the acrylic paint, you can add those little details in certain areas. So I'm using that to add a highlight to the nose to give it a nice shiny appearance. While that dries, I'll move on to adding some details to the eyes because this is what brings your animals to life, I feel. As an illustrator, I'm always very careful about how I do the eyes of an animal because those give your critters or people really great expressions and gives them life. So as I color in these dogs, I'm making sure to add eyebrows and little markings around their eyes to convey the expression that I want them to have. I also like adding some hard shadows and spots on the face. You'll notice I have a few of them, but then also on the ear, I did that as well. So I added some hard shadows on the areas where the ears were at the top because I'm going to also bring in some extra fur to make it look like that fur is hanging over top of the inner portion of the ear because it would be. I'm also adding the markings where his fingers of his paws are. And then finally, I'll add in a little bit of touch of lighter brown into his body. By adding another color like this over top, it's basically a semi-wash. That adds a lot of interest to the coloring. It's not the same single brown that we've used throughout this entire coloring, but rather a touch of another color. When you add white details, make sure that where you're adding them is completely dry, especially if you want them to be nice and crisp, like these dots on the eyes and then also like the ones that I used for his nose and body. So I colored all of the dogs in the same manner that I just showed you here. So I just wanted to make sure I focused on one dog because I felt like it was easier for you to see in the process of one of them. And then I just altered things just slightly by using different colors and gave them different expressions. But they all used the same technique of adding down that base coat of color and then working in layers on top of that that have just the detailed areas. To finish off this card, I did add them onto a background that I had put some subtle paw prints on using the stencil. They're kind of hard to see, but I did add those on there with a the stencil and then I watercolored over top of those to create a tone on tone effect. Created a nice watercolor background and I used the Newton Goes to Paris stamp set to add in that French feel to the card because I used a sentiment that said Merci and I paired that with a couple of sentiments from Simon Says Stamp to finish off the greeting. If you want to know more details of how I finished off this card and you want to see the still pictures, be sure to visit my blog as I have all that information over there. There are links to the product used down below and also on my blog. And I hope this video has been a great jumping off point for you to experiment with creating furry textures on your critters because this can be translated to almost any kind of animal. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll be back again very soon with more inspiration for you. But until next time, I hope you have a great day.